Okay, so I heard some good news this week. Yes. Tell me what happened. Uh, so on Tuesday, I had the stellite ganglion nerve block done. Yeah. And for the first time in over nine and a half months, I am pain free. We met, you know, earlier this year, and there's t tell the story in your own words. Uh, you know, now that everything's ha kind of finished, I realized that the story started before I thought it did. So yeah. really, the story started when I had that root canal done uh, over a year ago, and. Yeah. Really, in January 2016, I went in for some dental work, and I had pain in a tooth on the lower right side. And they just thought, well, we don't know what it is, we don't know what it is. So I was sent to a different uh, doctor, a root, canal specialist. root canal specialist, and he was doing the tests, and I never met all of the criteria to qualify for a root canal but I met a couple of them. And so I met with him in February and never met all of the criteria, but by August, I was still hurting so much on that side from the pressure, you know, I couldn't chew on that side that he finally just said, you know what, let's just go ahead and do the root canal. Yeah. And um, so I thought, okay, and the pain went away there, but then it was just a couple of months later when all of a sudden I got this pain on the lower left side. Opposite side. The opposite side and so in January of 2017 when I went into the dentist yeah. and he I said I've got pain here and he said well there's a you know tiny little cavity let's go ahead and work on that but he said it shouldn't be causing you the kind of pain that I'm describing disproportionate pain. yes and it after he did the work it continued to hurt and yeah. so um, when he then went in to do that work that's when the injection went wrong right. and so as he did that injection, he hit the nerve, uh, immediately resulting in the electrical shocks in my face. And I on mean, one side, on, on the same side? That, that left side of my face. Um, the numbing happened from about my temple to just curving underneath my jaw. Right. Um, and my face drooped just a little bit, but that only lasted a little over a week. But the next day following that shot, I started to get the red flushing and the fever on just my left side of the face. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for the first few days, we thought, well, maybe it's the trauma of it. And then it just continued to get worse. And I kept still having pain in teeth that were different. You know, psychologically, you start thinking, oh my gosh, did I tell him the wrong tooth? Did I really need the work over here? And um, so at that point, I went to my doctor um, because I had talked to some friends who said, there's probably nerve damage. Maybe they can give you some medicine. Your physician, MD. Yes. General doctor. General, general physician. And uh, he prescribed the Tegretol um, for me and you know, did that a couple of times a day. Um, it would work in bits, but it still never solved all of the pain issues. Uh, his next suggestion was he called in a favor to his oral surgeon. And so I went to visit him. He looked at me and said, it's trigeminal nerve damage, but I can't tell you why you have this flushing and the fever and the idea that the pain was jumping to different teeth yeah. in my mouth. Or if I would lay on my right side on a pillow, it was like the pain pooled on that side. Yeah. Um, so the next step was my general physician recommended I go to a neurologist and so I visited a new neurologist. Uh, he agreed that it was trigeminal nerve damage and then we added some gabapentin to my routine. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of medicine creating a lot of fog mm -hmm. um, and it just didn't quite solve everything. Nobody could ever really no diagnosis. Diagnose it. They couldn't explain all of, you know, why do my teeth feel cold? Why do, you know, I have some of these really odd things. Um, at the same time, uh, my mom needed the crown and came to see you. And um, you were the first person who proactively asked questions about my symptoms. Yeah. And, and your mom didn't know what to think of me, did she? No, um, <laughs> because it was so striking. You asked her, you said, does she feel like her teeth, do her feet teeth feel cold? My mom's like, she describes it like they feel like they're in an ice bath. And you were like, well, does she have 
color change and temperature change in your face. I was like, yes. So that led me to come see you. And um, when we were doing that examination, the confidence of we need to see Dr. Piper was really comforting. So uh, in July, we headed down to Florida to see Dr. Piper. And um, very quickly in the morning between Dr. Piper and Dr. Thompson, there was strong confidence that said it's CRPS1 in the face and, and neck. Yeah. And, but he wanted to examine why there were some additional bits of pain. So we went through CT scans and MRIs and different bites. Um, and then he discovered that there was severe damage on the right side and moderate damage on the left side of my uh, joints. Mm -hmm. And so that was something we knew we needed to fix. Um, he also discovered that C1 and C2 vertebra were out, so I needed to get those aligned and gave me my treatment plan um, and a diagnosis. And oh even, my gosh, a diagnosis. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> And also symptoms that I never even considered to be things. Um, I was having really odd sweating in my face. I mean, just in the marionette section of the mouth or really big beads of sweat right on the, the apples of my cheeks and not in weather or temperatures where I should be sweating. Um, or I get these shudders and I've always wondered what those are. Nobody else in my family shudders like I do. And all of these things through Dr. Piper's videos he had us watch and our conversation with him. Yeah. You know, my mother and I are looking at each other going, holy cow, this is, this is it. This is it. Dr. Piper decided you weren't quite a surgery case, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us what he had you do. Yeah, the so um, the treatment plan included a bite adjustment. So we needed to build the bite up mm -hmm. uh, to relieve the pressure in the joints, bringing the jaw forward and a little bit to the left, mm -hmm. um, and then chiropractic visits to improve the neck. Um, and then he had recommended uh, the stellite ganglion nerve block. Back um, home, here we Back home. Right. Uh, warning me that... I could probably burn a lot of bridges because there was a good chance that nobody around here was going to believe uh -huh. that this actually existed. No. <laughs> Shocking. 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 So you come back home to Arkansas, and we sat there and we worked on your bike. Can you describe yes. that? Yes. So we did eight onlays um, for the four back teeth on each side. On the lower. On the lower. Based on your MRI scans. Yes. We were trying to recapture your discs. Yes. Right. Um, and we knew we had the bite in the right spot after doing some of the splints. Pressure was relieved. Um, so spent eight, nine hours one day getting that mm -hmm. bite all the way back up. We did it all and with the computerized CAD cam. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and and then it did some cosmetic work on the eye teeth. Right. Um, because those were wearing down because the bite was not right. where it should have been. And now, you know, directly after the bite thing was addressed, you were a percentage better, right? I was. I was. I was probably about 30% better. Yeah. Um, and that number, I don't know that I really yeah. knew what that number was but until you felt now. But different. Yeah, yeah, I did. Now, now, oh, so I see what you're saying. So now you can quantify it. Yes. Ah. Yes. So 30 is fair. 30 is probably fair. You were so you were trying to address the neck. Yes. You, did you find help there? I did. I did. Um, I'm not the, really a big believer in chiropractic work, so I was a bit yeah. skeptical. Yeah. Um, but I found somebody who understood that it wasn't. He wasn't trying to sell me a life plan yeah. of chiropractic work, but was able to look at the scans, look at the X-rays, and say okay, it's gonna take about 12 visits for us to get this back in place with you doing your own home exercises. Very so good, next week, I've got my last two appointments and I should be good to go. That's feeling good. It is. Now, simultaneously, you were trying to search out somebody to give you a stellate block, right? Yes. Can you tell us that? Yes. 
Um, I reached out initially to my neurologist and he uh, said that he did not agree with Dr. Piper's diagnosis mm -hmm. after receiving the jump drive with all of my documentation on it. Mm -hmm. So we've severed that relationship. <laughs> um, he did or you did? I did. <laughs> okay. um, and then I got a recommendation from a coworker for someone uh, that she had used for epidural. Mm -hmm. um, blocks and he had great ratings I gave him a call he wouldn't even speak to me uh, number three was a gentleman down uh, in Fayetteville uh, another recommendation that I had gotten from a co-worker and um, he was more concerned with his own liability than he was actually having any level of compassion and caring for a patient. Was he the one that mentioned the word dude? Yes. Can you describe to us what he said? Yeah, um, as we were talking about our experience and going to see Dr. Piper, he kept referring to him as that dude in Florida. Who doesn't know what he's talking about. Who doesn't about. know what he's talking about. I've never heard of him and I'm thinking, well, he's never heard of you. So I don't understand why this matters. What's the point, yeah. Um, and it was just, he, he spent more time talking about the risks and the dangers and why this is an, an idea. And if I didn't have it in the first one to three months of diagnosis, it's not going to work. Um, he was willing to do it, but because he was setting this up in such a negative manner, I didn't want him anywhere near my neck. So then number four. Yes. Um, number four was actually the recommendation of my general physician. Yeah. So when I had met with him and he had read through Dr. Piper's paperwork, I went to see him the next week and he fully agreed with the diagnosis. He said, well, I'll send the reference over to this clinic. And after we had met, it was a week and I hadn't heard anything from the clinic. So I had called and said, is this appointment going to be scheduled? And they were like, well, you know, he's got to read through the reference. It'll be time. Yeah. In the meantime, I had met with all these other doctors. I honestly kind of forgot about it. Mm -hmm. I thought, nobody's going to do this. Let's just give up. Mm -hmm. And it was actually the day after we met with the that dude um, doctor <laughs> that the clinic called and wanted to schedule my appointment. And yeah. so we met with this very young doctor um, who... In the consultation, um, was arrogant, but I think he may be trying to prove that he knows what he's doing, that he's qualified. He's ruffling his feathers. He is. You're probably the third or fourth seller he's ever given, but he doesn't want you to know that. <laughs> yeah. That makes me feel good. Well, I'm just telling you, at that yeah. age, I'm guessing. Yeah. It's a guess, but thank God you got it. Yeah. Um, he didn't agree with Piper's diagnosis, okay. um, but when he was doing the evaluation, he said, I can see though, there is clearly a sympathetic nerve issue. Right. So he said, we can do the block. He said, but there's a really good chance it's only gonna last a few hours. Right, and that was how long ago? Tuesday, this That was Friday. Tuesday. I'm approaching 68 hours of pain-free. It's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the dental perspective, and I wanna start out uh, with a few statements about our pain colleagues in medicine. Uh, many of them are very poorly informed about facial CRPS. They'll deny the existence of facial CRPS, even, even going so far as to pompously declare that the condition can't exist in the head and neck area. These are my favorite people. Uh, this is a tremendous disservice to the patients because if you're not treating this condition, then it's going to spread. Okay, it's going to spread, uh, it can spread from the face into the rest of the body, it can become more chronic and centrally maintained pain. And these doctors who are skeptical about Crip's diagnosis in the face, very oftentimes drive the patients towards very expensive, unnecessary treatment. Uh, cervical facet blocks, uh, implant uh, pain pumps, and so on and so forth. And to put it in a nutshell, uh, these doctors are full of it. Okay, uh, they really don't know what they're talking about. And so this is the first time I've made that revelation from the podium. 